With Houdini 20.5, we have some new ways of doing some different things inside Houdini. And one of those is modeling. So I wanted to show a couple of different ways that we can use cops to generate models. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. Let's go ahead and drop down a SOP create. We are in the stage context, so we will need that. Let's drop down a cop net and we can dive inside and we can create a shape that would be maybe somewhat difficult to model inside of regular Houdini. So let's just drop down. I'm going to do this node called SDF setup. It's just a recipe that I've created that just creates the SDF shape piped into our SDF mono for us. So I don't have to drop down each individual one. Definitely recommend using the recipes. They're super cool and save you a ton of time. These are super simple to set up as well. Let's come in here though and set this to compound and let's come down to maybe this fish scale because this would be maybe a little bit time consuming to get this type of a shape inside of Houdini normally. So let's drop down a null and we can output our shape here. Let's call this out shape and we can jump up and let's create a node called the trace node. And what this node allows us to do is trace an image. So we can pipe in an image or we can pop it, pipe in a cop. So let's take the cop input and let's take our shape and just select that. And right away we have our shape that is being imported in here. And it's basically just created that shape for us, which is super, super cool. Now you can do some different things with this. If you look, let's see some of these edges doesn't look like it's showing very well right now, but some of these edges may not be super smooth. You can play around with these filters. Let's go ahead and jump back in here and let's drop down an edge detect so we can show some of this. So the edge detect is just going to give us basically our edges in here. So we can jump back up, come to our trace node, and you see we have these different filters that we have here. Now, if we look at our shape here, you can see that it's kind of jagged here on our edges. So we can do some different things to try to clean those up. We can try and resample it. That works a little bit. You can really crank down the step size or whatever you want to do. It doesn't work super well. We can try and smooth these or we can try to resample and smooth these. Maybe bring this up a little bit. It starts to clean it up some. So you can play around with these and get some different, different options for you know cleaning up your models. We can also select this fit to curves, or we can select this whole faces, which just gets rid of that middle face for us. So just play around with the different settings. You can do a lot of different things with this, and we can use this for a lot of different things inside Houdini. If we wanted to maybe do some weird things with noises, we can drop down a fractal noise maybe pipe that into the edge detect here and let's come in, let's take the element size up and let's lower the roughness some here and just crank up the contrast. And maybe we'll offset this a little bit and then we can, let's see, Tick down the amplitude maybe to get rid of some of those smaller shapes. I don't know. You can do some some interesting things with this, all sorts of different different things. You can play with the roughness. Maybe we get this weird type of a shape going on. And did that output. Let's do uncheck that whole faces. Whoops. All right, so that didn't really work, but you can do some some interesting things with this. Let's play around with this maybe a little bit more. Let's undo that edge detect or just bypass it. We crank up the amplitude here. I don't know. We can get some some weird shapes with this. Let's maybe pin this, and then you can play around with the element size. So you can get some interesting abstract shapes, you know, mess with all these different things. You can model some different things with the SDF shapes. If you wanted to combine these, there's some cool things you can do with combining these. So maybe we come in here, come to our basic. Let's, or actually let's go to like a marker or whatever. And then make a copy of this. And then we could do maybe a subtraction. 
pipe this into the background, this into the foreground, and let's set this to maybe the basic. And you can play around with this, get some interesting shapes with this. So it could be a little bit uh, difficult to get some more complex shapes. Uh, maybe play around with these markers, you know, get sort of this type of a shape, you know, all sorts of different things that you can do with this to create some interesting shapes. And then obviously you can go in here and you could do a poly extrude. Oops. Go poly extrude, increase the distance, and now you've got some sort of an interesting shape that we've got going on here. Now, obviously, not the most complex thing, but you can play around with it and get some cool stuff. Now, I wanted to show how we can also do this with height fields as well, because you can mess around with height fields and use cops with those, as well as just use them to, you know, model some maybe some like sci-fi panel type stuff. So let's drop down like a height field, and then we do a height field project. And if we look at our cop net here, we actually have a, if we look at our info, we have a volume that's on this. So the cop net is just a 2D volume. It's basically just like a height field. So we should be able to just rename this to, or give it a name, I should say, and name it to height. And then we would also need to make sure it's laying flat on our grid here, like the height field is. Our height field lays flat. So we need to set this in our cop net to be the ZX plane. And now you can see that it is laying flat on our grid here. So you'd think that we'd be able to do a height field transform and just scale this up to 500 and project this onto our height field. But that doesn't actually work. You have to add one other node, which is a little weird. It's called the primitive properties node. You can pipe that in and we come to our volumes, select adjust visualization and set that to height field. Now we have everything that's being displayed onto our height field. So you can mess around with this, create some interesting shapes with this as well. There's a lot of different things that you could do with this. You know, you could use like a, a ramp. Wire this into our output. So I can bring that all the way up and we could create maybe a couple of these. Let's do, we were doing like a sci-fi panel thing and we're going to have like cutouts, set this to constant and then we could play around with, with this. And then you could obviously, you know, play around with how much you want to displace them with either inside of here. So let's, I don't want that. Want just these two. Bring the value down. Get rid of that one. And then, yeah, so you could play around with the values here to do your displacement in here. And then you can just convert this in HF convert. And we can convert this back to polygons. And we get pretty decent geometry with this as well. So if we look at our wireframe, you see that it is, you know, giving us some, some decent geometry with this. So not terrible. And like I said, you could use this for some cool stuff, creating some like height field or a uh, sci-fi paneling type stuff. If you wanted to transform this back down to, you know, the somewhat normal size, instead of it being super huge, just drop down your transforms and now we're back to having something that's more uh, a manageable size. So lots of different ways that you can use COPS. I definitely recommend looking into how you can use COPS to enhance your workflows for different things because there's lots of different things that you can use this for and, and do with it. It's a, a super cool thing that I think as we go further and further on into having it and it gets developed more and more that we're going to see some some really awesome stuff being made with cops but uh, not that there isn't out there right now because there definitely is but i think that people are going to get really really creative with it so anyways hopefully this has helped you out and opened your eyes to some of the different ways that you can use cops uh, there's a bunch of other ways that you can use it inside of houdini as well and we'll probably be taking a look at some of those as well in the future but anyways hope this helped you out thank you guys for watching and have a good day